Welcome to How We Grow, an essential playbook to grow and scale your vacation rental business with advice and insights from the best in the biz with your host, Linnell Gordon. So welcome to How We Grow, the vacation rental show. Guys, we're doing quick tips this week that we're going to broadcast. It's not full podcast sessions, so it's going to be a lot of fun. So Doug, what we're doing this week is what I want you to share is just some quick tips for people who are looking to grow their vacation rental business that really don't know. They haven't been in it long, maybe, or maybe they've been doing something else and they're just like, you know what, I want to do this and I'm going to do research. They want to talk to people that have been in the business for a long time. And Doug, you are very sick. Let me just, I want to give some background on Doug because I don't think people know it. Now, I just happen to know him because he's a friend of mine, but Doug has not built only one property management company. How many have you built? Now I'm talking about from the very beginning. Uh, well, two, I can think of two, th- and then I had um, several acquisitions in addition to those over time. I can think of three right off the top of my head. So we're just going to go with his well, that two. Is three. I'm sorry. I yeah. About that one. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a real one. Yeah. Um, Doug has started from nothing twice. Three times. Three times. Three times. Well, see, there's the third. So three times you started from absolutely nothing to come back. Um, I know we were talking earlier with someone who had uh, the unfortunate experience of taking on investors and they had to get out of that and start. They were able to get out of it without having to start anew. But you've had to restart several times. So we're talking to people who maybe they've been in it for a while and they don't know what to do. Or maybe they're, they're just deciding this is what I want to do with my life. So what we're looking to do is create with how we grow, you want to create a mentorship group for the whole industry because the people that I talk to, the people that I'm interviewing are people that I know uh, are willing to share. So after we talk, um, are you willing to share? If people want to contact you and ask, would you be willing to well, talk to them? I've been doing uh, these conferences in the VRMA from the beginning, so that's 35, 36 years. And all along the way, when I meet people, I say, I make sure they have my card. It's not so much for networking, but to share. Yeah. And I'll get calls throughout the year. Call, text, email. Hey, what do you think about this? How do I do this? Mm-hmm. And, um, and then I'll fire back with, well, how are you doing it? And I might learn from that. So it, it goes both ways, but sharing is what we should all be about in this industry. What someone else does in another marketplace won't hurt you. And if someone in your marketplace does some of the things that you do, It'll benefit both of you. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a really great way to look at it. Um, I think our attitude toward that has changed in the last 10 years. <laughs> I really do. It's gotten right competitive. Well, yeah. I mean, we are, we are very, very competitive, but there's so much data out there now that we're not as afraid of sharing um, things that we might have once been afraid to share. Regardless, tell me, this is about you, tell me, what would you tell somebody that, that wants to grow their business? Growing your business is, uh, is important. That you're either green and growing or you are ripe and rotting. You have to grow. Oh, oh say that again. Say that again. You're either green and growing or you're ripe and rotting. Oh, wow. You can't stay neutral on revenue because your expenses will never stay neutral. Right, right. They're always growing. So you have to keep up with it unless uh, you want it to erode down to zero, uh, which happens from time to time for people who aren't staying aware of what... Uh, what is possible to grow your revenue and you can grow your bottom line more with growing revenues that are existing with existing homeowners with you don't have to grow it with getting new homeowners mm-hmm. because in our marketplace on the outer banks it's tough no kidding to get another house someone else has got to lose another house yeah, yeah. and that doesn't happen so much and so we're we're staying fairly neutral on our number of homes and um you can grow your revenue through fees uh, my, one of my many expressions I'm known for is the only fee that I don't charge is the one I haven't thought of yet. <laughs> because they're available to you without pushback from the homeowner or the guest. Many times the guest never sees it. I have 17 line items of revenue. Some of them are small, some of them are huge. I remember sitting around uh, after a conference in Orlando and Al Williams from Priscilla Murphy Realty after a session was sitting at a table Uh and in two minutes he had 50 people crowded around him and it was like he was throwing $100 bills at everybody. Wow. He said you can add a fee to each reservation 
you can charge a booking fee for $25. And we all went, oh my gosh, you can't do that. Well, I was the last one on the bandwagon. And I'll say today that I'm a little embarrassed that I am the second highest booking fee on the Outer Banks at $280. Mm -hmm. And you can get it and you need it. You do, because that's 100% yours. Explain to people that may not know, um, who are just in property management, the difference between a fee and add-on, or tell them how it's paid and who pays it and why nobody cares. Mostly it's paid by the, by the rental guest. Guest, right. Sometimes it's one such as uh, basic maintenance that the homeowner pays, uh, or some other uh, annual cost like cob lock charge or something. Um, but it's typically coming from the guest, and it's built into the rental rate in our market, and the guest doesn't see it. Mm -hmm. It is disclosed and known by the homeowner. So inside of the advertised rent, you've got you've got the owner rent, you've got admin fee, or booking fee, mm -hmm. and you've got a linen and towel charge because mm -hmm. we supply linen and towel to mm -hmm. each home. So um, a couple years ago, the North Carolina Real Estate Commission allowed us to put a a new fee on top of a, the short-term rental lease for cleaning, housekeeping. And with that, we covered 100% of our cost. On right, there you 100%. go. Built by property managers for property managers. Streamline is a powerful software that gives managers enterprise level capabilities to drive more revenue and improve operational efficiency. Migrate into Streamline allows property managers to gain functionality while reducing the need for multiple vendors, improving flow by logging into a single system and reducing redundant technology costs. With Streamline, property managers achieve revenue lifts by leveraging our fully fledged communication center, reservations quoting system, revenue management tools, homeowner acquisition CRM, and powerful direct OTA connections. Streamline also has industry-leading trust accounting and report capabilities to give you clarity in an overall company performance. Learn more about Streamline Vacation Rental Software at StreamlineVRS.com. So here's the thing to think about here, and I just, I want people to get it because it's really, this is huge, guys. If you haven't listened to anything I've ever said on any show, you should listen to this. Because when you charge a fee, 100% of that belongs to you. You don't pay a percentage to the homeowner. You don't pay a percentage to anybody else. It's, it's, it's your revenue. And one interesting part on that, every time you increase a fee, you have zero variable cost. Wow, yeah. So if you go from X and add $30 to that fee, it doesn't sound like much. Do that 7,000 times. Mm -hmm. You have got all of that revenue, 200,000 plus, with no cost associated with it. And each year, I look to one of our fees and say to myself, which one can I change, increase, and not get pushback? Mm -hmm. Now, I might have a need in maintenance to increase it because I might not quite be covering that cost. Ah. However, I'm going to get pushback from that homeowner. Right. If I put it over here in, in the linen charge, the guests are going to see it, and I won't get, and they don't need the increase, but I can put it there and it will not be noticed or have any pushback. And you're covering all your expenses plus your... Well, the extra, in there, all the other variable costs or fixed costs are, are done. Okay. So uh, you're getting 100% on that. Another thing that I have said all is always so important. When you're making a change to a fee or you are creating a fee, go bolt. Mm. Don't go in there with $25. Go mm. in there with $125. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it will work. Your competitors might try to use it against you and then they'll sit around the table and they'll say, you know what? They're getting $300,000 more than we are. Criminy, I'm gonna charge that fee also. That's where you help your competitors. That's true. Because it's, it's good for the industry when everyone has the dollars that they are, uh, need in order to supply the services that we all wanna deliver. You don't want to run on a small margin, guys. That's one of the things. If you wanna know anything about your P&L, if you wanna know anything about the accounting portion of your business, Doug is a great mentor for that, guys, because that's his background, and it really is his strength. Um, over the many years that I've known Doug, I don't know how many times uh, I've had him talk not about numbers, as you've noticed. We're talking all about numbers. He's all about the numbers. And so if you need to understand where your numbers need to be and how you can be very healthy in your growth, 
Doug is the right person to talk about it. So Doug, um, let's go back to that $30 fee. So the 7,000 number he threw out were the number of reservations you have a year. So say you say you, you're a small property management company, you do a thousand reservations a year or a hundred year reservations a year. You're taking that 30 yeah. and times seven, that's $21,000 just for that one fee. With no cost. With no added, no added expense on that. Now on my admin fee, booking fee, whatever you want to name it, I do charge into that the expense of credit card cost. Now every business puts back the cost of credit cards to the consumers one way or another. That's true. This is how we do it. Yeah. But I also have $165 in there for whatever I want. Uh, uh, I do supply damage waiver. Um, okay. It's not insurance. Damage it's, waiver is it's, important, guys. It's damage waiver for. It's not an insurance company. This is in house. So if a if a guest says uh, Uncle Billy broke the glass on top of the table, I say is Uncle Billy all right? And then I go back and I buy the new glass top. Homeowner doesn't get wigged out. Guest doesn't get wigged out. No insurance you don't get to file. Out, and it happens so rare that it is, it is a profit margin on the damage waiver. It eliminates a lot of stress and, and it works. Um, and that's something you can increase and not have the consumer see it. And not have anybody mind. I mean, it's the right thing to do. You it's do, just the right thing to do as a property manager. You're the covering right the, thing. yes. You, you have to, you know, we have it set up so that we tell the guests, they must tell us that they broke it in order to get reimbursed. But you know, while the unsupervised teenage boys are. The, Jumping the off the The boy end. broke the lamp and, and threw it away without mom seeing it because he knew mom was going to smack him. But if I would have replaced it, if it had been reported, I would replace it. And all the stress goes away from the homeowner. There's nothing worse than losing a homeowner over a, you know, a $49 lamp from Wayfair. And that's happened. I've heard lots of stories on things oh, yeah. like that. Tell them what we mean by damage. Because I've heard, a, I've told a lot of people about this. And they've, re they've never heard of a uh, damage waiver protection that we can, or da a damage waiver that we do as property managers. So explain how that works. Well, it's insurance that you can pay for and buy mm -hmm. uh, and have the guests pay for that, for which you get a... Uh, Small a, percentage. A, a handsome, I don't know, a pretty good percentage. That's, well, for um, travel insurance, that's true, they'll yeah. handle all that for you. But you can do it on your own and make a lot more money on it. The, there are exceptions to it. It doesn't cover pet damage. Hmm. Because if somebody's dumb enough to lock their dog in a door in a room and go to the beach and then come back and he ate the room, <laughs> um, that's just that's just not good. Um, uh, <laughs> it, it doesn't cover no, normal wear and tear. So, no. uh, and that's a discussion that you should have often with your homeowners as as time goes by, to let them know that they're pulling eighty thousand dollars out of this house. They're going to get a little use. And there's a ding on the wall. There's a there's a stain on the carpet. There's a uh, just a, some small items that happen every day um, and build up over time. Mm -hmm. tell, um, tell, tell everyone about, we're talking handsome margins now, way to make money. That's all we talk about actually when we talk with Doug. Let's talk about um, travel insurance. Is there, is there a good way to make money on travel insurance? Yes, there is. Uh, the reason why I'm, I'm confident and comfortable with numbers is uh, my background is I'm a certified public accountant. Da -da. And um, I worked in that for five years out of college, and it chewed me up and spit me out, didn't really like me. Um, <laughs> so I, I found out that uh, selling uh, was a, a great way to go and, and that I could sell ribs to women wearing white gloves. So um, it works out very nicely. <laughs> now, what was the question again, please? We're talking about travel insurance okay. and why, how can they make, oh, there's a lot, Doug, there are a lot of people that don't do travel insurance. They you, literally you, don't. You must sell travel insurance. It is very, very easy. You want to make there's money. A couple of steps yes. you have to do that are all, all explained to you and, and get done. And our market has a reason to buy travel insurance from the renter as every market has a reason, it may be different than mine. Right. So mine is hurricane evacuation. But there's so many more benefits that we use more often, especially when we don't have hurricanes, although we've got Lee hanging out there right now. Mm -mm -mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, you know, someone gets sick, you, you have trouble at work. Uh, you know, Even if your grandmother is not going on the vacation and the grandmother gets sick and you must stay and help and you can't go, that'll be paid by your travel insurance. So a lot of great reasons to do it. If you're traveling with small children, 
Ain't no way in the world I would travel without no. travel insurance. Just yeah. Kids get, I mean, they're all back in school now. All the colds and sniffles will start coming home. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So here's, here's the thing, guys, about, about travel insurance. So I'm going to give Rental Guardian a plug. Rental Guardian is a company that provides it. And they do this really cool thing called cancel for any reason. And the reason I mention it is because it's really good for the guest. It's not just good for the property manager because you make a lot of money on it. But it's good for the guests too, and it's so it's such a win-win um, because it it really does cover for anything. Um, so there's another line item. I I think, guys, if you want to know more about how to make money in your business, this is the guy to this is the guy you want as a mentor. You really do. Uh, and Doug is so sweet. He this episode of How We Grow was brought to you by Streamline. To find out more about how Streamline can help grow your vacation rental business, visit StreamlineVRS.com. Make sure to search for How We Grow in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, or anywhere else podcasts are found and hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. On behalf of the team here at Inhabit, thanks for listening.